right? And I'm just going to write CY for cyclohexyl. So CY is this. So we'll get this anion and cation pair between this and this, between the carboxylate and then the protonated carbonate. All right, so now my question is, since this is protonated, what did we do to the carbon in the middle? Did we make it more electrophilic or less electrophilic? We made it more electrophilic. So then, this is the catalytic and acetyl mechanism, right, where the first thing we do is we protonate the carbonyl and the weak nucleophile adds in. Exactly the same case here. The carboxylic acid protonates it to make this more electrophilic. So a little partial positive charge versus a lot more partial positive charge. So now that it's protonated, it can attack the middle carbon. So 
So here's our mean. Alright, so here's our tetrahedral intermediate. I'm going to put it in brackets. So here's the carbonate added into. This is going to be the leaving group. This was the, the thing that added. Um, do you think that it's fair to do a proton transfer in this case? I think so. Alright, uh, yeah, I think it's fair to do a proton transfer. What's going to take the proton? What? Oxygen. All right, oxygen could take it, or the amine could take it. <coughs> and so the choice between this oxygen, or both, or this could take it. Yeah. But of course, if, if this uh, if this take took it, it would be in complete equilibrium. And so we would, uh, but thinking of a reductive pathway, uh, we know because we get an amide, this has got to be the leaving group. So knowing that this is the leaving group, which position of these two do you think would take the proton? Yeah, it's, it's nitrogen. Nitrogen is always going to be nitrogen. So we can draw <coughs> this taking this proton. Of course, it's equilibrium. So this can take the proton as well, but eventually the proton will find its way in this nitrogen. It's all equilibrium stuff. So of course now this is a positively charged dominium looking thing. And we get this. And so now we really let me get Now we get this key intermediate, which can now kick off. Which can now kick off this DCC-based fragment. <coughs> they give us our amide plus actually see is a urea. A urea. So this is kicked off and it gives us a very stable urea plus our act. So just, just once again it's just an activation <coughs> of a carboxylic acid to give us something that's very unhydride like <laughs> But then, then the mean did now add into the carbonyl, giving us these kind of complex looking tetrahedral intermediates. But really, you can think of this entire section as just a leaving group. Yes? Absolutely. Is that of any significance, or do TK arguments prevent that? Oh no, that, that, that can happen. Okay. But then the urea is just going to, then the tautomer is just going to quick, quickly tautomerize. Okay. So the reason I'm not teaching it like that is because I don't think I've introduced what a tautomer is. But you do get both, ultimately. Well, they're going to be in equilibrium. Like, tautomer is already equilibrium with each other. Okay. So, urea is always going to be in equilibrium with its tautomer. So, so they're the same thing. The same thing. The equilibrium occurs afterwards, but the end is still going to be the only way to have yeah, the no, If you have the oxygen take it and you kick it up, you know, that could happen. But the nitrogen is going to be more basic. Okay. So. SB2 nitrogen will still be more basic than the normal oxygen. So 
It's complex, and we'll talk about this a lot, but just remember, we're just activating the carboxylic acid to give us an ester, and then the mean adds, and we have a proton transfer, and the urea kicks off. So just to give you an example,